I'm going to be handing things over to the um, fabulous folks from group number two, um, which is the Theme Camp Criteria group, to tell you about their work. Um, and later on, you'll hear from group number six, the Convenience Camps and the 10 Principles group. Um, so I'm going to let them take it away. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you guys can control your own slides. <laughs> so hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Dilemma from Paradise Motel and the Camp Support Council, and also helped this group of people write the uh, new Theme Camp criteria. Hi, everybody. My name is Ratchet, and I'm with Mud Skipper's Urban Decay Cafe in the Icarus Art Car. Hey, everyone. I'm Spacious. I'm instigator of Camp Contact, mayor of Anahasa Village, and I'm also a regional contact here in Washington, D.C. Uh, howdy. I'm, I'm Catnip. I'm the camp lead from Beats and Deets, long-term volunteer at Flower Info. And if, okay, I've now got video up so that's really good uh i'm from sydney australia it's five o'clock in the morning here so it's dark and i'm grumpy but you'll have to deal with that and hi i'm hep kitten and i'm on the placement team hep where's your feather headdress you're gonna wear <laughs> just kitty ears all right so everyone we have new placement criteria yay uh Theme camps are groups of participants who together contribute a service, engagement, art, or other creative interactive experience available for citizens of Black Rock City without expectation of anything in return. As a community, we create Black Rock City every year because we believe there's value in having an entirely different kind of experience, one that's grounded in what you have to contribute, say, make, do, or share. Theme camps think beyond typical exchanges and apply their creativity, resourcefulness, and their unique expression of our culture towards creating experiences that encourage participants to share in their expression with the Burning Man community. So the criteria to receive theme camp placement connect the 10 principles of Burning Man to direct actions camps can take in Black Rock City. The lived culture of BRC doesn't come from reading a vision document or thinking about the criteria as a placement checklist, Culture comes from you, your camp, from your community, and how we all collectively show up in Black Rock City. They should encourage you to imagine how your camp can manifest these criteria each year in your own way. The reality of each year's cultural direction is up to all of us. Now, most parts of the criteria will look familiar. We've added some more explicit definitions of each criteria and added two new categories, uniqueness and culture and values. Uh, each of these uh, criterion is listed, includes a detailed explanation of what camps are encouraged to strive for to receive placement and what's considered when determining a camp standing. While the top level criteria are important, camps won't be expected to implement every bullet point, but rather to tailor their approach to meet the spirit of each criterion. Camps are encouraged to try new things, even if they fail. Whatever it is, polished or janky, big or small, camps are encouraged to boldly celebrate the unique gifts and perspectives they bring to the playa. Through our group's process, we robustly discussed different perspectives and developed options to analyze and discuss. We deeply explored the rich middle ground between polarities and tension points. Along the way, here are just a few of the things that we kept in mind as we balanced and developed the criteria. Establishing a clear bar while still leaving room for the janky that we all know and love. Being clear without being so specific that it limits camp's interactivity. When is it okay or not okay to be exclusive with your interactivity? Where is the line between pushing boundaries and exploring controversy versus maintaining safe and consensual experiences? Guidance surrounds nice to haves, should haves, and at the end of the day, true deal breakers. When is it reasonable for us to ask all versus most versus some? And defining what we really mean by interactivity, an act of giving versus the gift itself. We looked at these connections through the lens of many different stakeholder roles and through the feedback from the survey. Where we landed is the result of a delicate dance with all of these perspectives. We're happy with the result and do believe it will fulfill the vision set forth in the cultural direction setting vision. We considered theme camp organizers and placers, small and large camps, long standing versus newer camps, the cultural vision for residential Black Rock City, 
diversity and equity and the cultural direction setting feedback survey with more than 5,000 uh, Black Rock City residents responding. So the new criteria are out in the world for you all to see, and we really look forward to discussing them with as many of you as possible to break out. As Dilemma said, one of the things that we really tried to do here was to tie the criteria back to the 10 principles. We talk about interactivity a lot, but without context, interactivity can sound a little, well, transactional. In reality, interactivity at Burning Man is an expression of radical inclusion. It's an expression of gifting, communal effort and participation. It's not just about giving stuff away. So we wanted at every point we could to anchor all the criteria back to the principles that relate to them. And all camps, regardless of whether they're placed or not, should strive to embody the 10 principles in everything we do. So we grounded the criteria back to them to forge a connection between direct action that camps can take to embody those principles in everything they do in the desert. The rest of our presentation involves concepts and recommendations that have not yet been approved. Everything following the slide are recommendations and as such should be considered a window into what we are considering now. Please be aware that everything is still up for discussion and so things are likely to change and evolve. With the current system, a camp only knows if they are placed or not placed in which of one of three tiers of standing, good, limited, or not in good, they, that they receive. There are pretty dire consequences attached to not good or limited standing and obviously not placed. In both cases, approximately 95% of camps were in the top category with only egregious cases going into the others. It was only in these cases that resource consequences were attached. No placement in the case of not placed and no or limited DGS in the case of limited or bad standing. Having announced in May of 2019 that placed camps may not get DGS tickets for 2020, in February it was announced that a camp's interactivity levels would be added as a criteria for DGS. As a result, about 15% of camps had DGS tickets cut or eliminated. Given the record number of camps submitting questionnaires and receiving placement in 2019, this was the only way to manage the scarce resource of tickets. So one of the questions we had to address was, how can we revise placement and standing to fairly and transparently help in managing scarcity in a way that supports our culture and values? This means that with both placement and standing, camps don't know if they've just made the cutoff or if they're placed without any concerns. A camp that made it comfortably but doesn't know it might get into an arms race that they actually don't need to be in. At the other end of the scale, some camps are complacently unaware that they're just hovering above a cutoff point that is not static. How many of the camps that were assessed as having low interactivity and because of that had their DGS invitations cut knew that this was actually coming? This is becoming more of an issue as more camps submit questionnaires while the space and ticket allocations do not increase. Again, in trying to look at this and come up with solutions, we tried to focus on what were constraints we cannot move, what we were trying to solve for, and then come up with an approach or a possible solution. So the criteria and the system behind them need to help guide theme camps to succeed and also help them get through failures. They need to allow for creativity, originality, the janky, the spontaneous, and the weirdly beautiful. We need to encourage small, new, and unique ideas, but equally, we don't want to punish the larger, more celebrated and established camps that have largely defined our city to date. We need to celebrate the intention of an offering rather than only the end product, as difficult as that may be to do. In a gifting economy, a janky home-baked cake may have more value than an exquisite bought one. And we've tried to not lose that. It also needs as best as we can not to fuel an arms race. And in particular, not to fuel an arms race that can be won with money or by higher production values. The other thing that we needed to do here is address clear community concerns that came out through the survey. The survey showed a strong community feeling that the rules around placement are actually fine, 
But as far as the community can see, they're not enforced and some camps are getting away with not really following them. Now, we don't actually know how real that problem is, but we heard you loud and clear that you think there's a problem. So we are proposing that in 2020, the placement announced include a third intermediary tier yet to be named between placed and not placed. This tier will let camps know, yes, you are placed for 2020, but you made it without too much room to spare. Camps placed in this middle tier have more information to navigate their choices for this year's event. We're also proposing that an extra tier get added to standing, also yet to be named. This fourth tier will serve as a warning. It'll mean that your camp isn't quite in good or limited standing, but somewhere in between. The DGS consequences of this tier are yet to be determined and are the providence of a different cultural direction setting group, group five. As a camp moves down in the standing tiers, they'll have access to fewer resources. Evaluations for both placement and standing will be based on the new criteria. The standing evaluation will strive to find out if a camp did what it said it was going to do and were they good citizens. As standing becomes increasingly important for resources allocation to camps, we wanted to get input from camps. We're proposing that this year, post event, placement will ask each camp to submit a self evaluation form that allows them to assess the fulfillment of the criteria. This will be an opportunity to reflect on and share what went well, what didn't go so well, and what can be improved for next year. Importantly, it's an opportunity to talk through things that didn't go according to plan. The intention here is that the standing will not be impacted by heroic failure or genuine misadventure. This is an opportunity to share that narrative. We understand this is, is another thing we're asking camps leads to do, but given the importance of standing to DGS and our efforts to make strong evaluations as meaningful as possible, we feel it's important and we wanna know how y'all feel about that. In addition to making self-assessment of your own camp, we're proposing that camp leads fill out a new basic questionnaire about your nearest neighbors across the street and next door. These will mostly be simple tick box type questions, but there'll be space for camps to share any positive or negative feedback they may experience with these neighbors. Now, it, it looks like we've spoiled our big reveal here. Now, Hep, Hep said earlier that this stuff isn't improved, approved, it's work in progress, and perhaps the least approved thing is Space Forest. Space Forest! Space Forest! So we'll be using it for the rest of the presentation, though it may be the last time you ever hear it. And this very slide may become a collector's item. <laughs> so the idea here is that we recommend a new subgroup of placement that that basically works with places to make standing evaluations. To date, there hasn't been a lot of resource put into standing evaluations and therefore they're a little, you know, janky. So the idea is that spaces get it. Spaces will liaise with not just the places, but with any other departments that have interactions with place camps. The purpose is to make more informed decisions on standing that are data driven and as objective as possible. We're asking a number of departments that are not placement to make this happen. And we think therefore that it's gonna take some time for those processes to become as integrated as they need to be. However, in 2020, the proposal is that spaces will be active during the event and post event to generate meaningful data-driven standing evaluations that will impact the GS in 2021. The other new thing we're looking at doing is the statement of intent. Historically, EGS allocations have been done largely based on a formula relevant to the camp size. Camps of the same size got roughly the same number of tickets, whether or not they were planning to come back the next year. The reality is that some camps need more tickets and some camps need less, and a lot of them may not come back in one year. So this coming winter, uh, camps are going to be asked to submit a statement of intent for the 2021 year with three simple questions. Is your camp planning to come back to Black Rock City next year with substantially the same size, people and space, and bringing the same level of interactivity or more? 
And could your camp deliver the same level of interactivity as you delivered last year with the same number of VGS tickets that you were allocated in the previous year? And then the third question is, is that the absolute minimum number of tickets your camp would need in order to deliver the same level of interactivity as you delivered in the previous year? If the answer to the questions one or two is no, and your camp will be offering less and or needing more resources, some or all of your ticket allocation may be, be deferred until after you have submitted and placement has reviewed your questionnaire. Conversely, if you know you could get by with fewer tickets, tell us by saying no to question three. It's more likely that you'll get all the tickets you do actually need in the first round of VGS. The current system hasn't been granular and detailed enough for standing to have much of an effect on placement for the majority of camps the following year. As standing evaluations become more robust, questionnaire evaluation will be able to integrate the information collected earlier in the year. This integrated information will enable placers to make a more informed judgment as they are reviewing questionnaires because we will have a better idea on whether a camp generally does what they say they're going to do and whether they're good citizens. For example, if a camp has a track record of delivering in the past, placement can have more confidence that they will deliver what they are promising in their questionnaire this year. Conversely, if a camp has a bad track record, of not, track record of not doing what they say they were going to do, placement can more easily take this into consideration in the placement evaluation process. So, if all of our proposals are approved as they're currently written, what do those changes look like from a theme camps lead perspective for this event cycle? First, placement announced at the end of June will include an extra tier in addition to placed, not placed. This tier, in effect, means you got placed, but only just. It's an opportunity to course correct. During and post event, Space Force will begin to make connections with different stakeholders in the process, Rangers, Heat, Resto, OSS, etc., with the intent of starting to create systems to collect feedback and transfer the information needed to make standing evals. Three, post event in October, camps will be required to submit a self evaluation. Four, post event around January, camps will submit a simple statement of intent about their plans for the following year. Standing evaluation will include an additional tier of to the good, limited, and not good system currently in place. This tier will in effect mean good, but could be better. Again, it's an opportunity to course correct. Each year after standing is announced, the Space Force will assess and adjust the system as needed. Space Force. Space Force. Space Force. <laughs> For a placement questionnaire in 2021, standing will be integrated into the placement evaluation process, and this integration will continue to grow and change over time. We really want to thank you all for taking the opportunity today to listen to us rattle on about the things we've been working on for the last six months. Um, and if you'd like to hear more or provide feedback, and we would really love feedback, please come to our breakout session today. Space Force, Space Force. 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 Force.